In this video, we're going to focus on how we can create a hoover effect with the labels and make sure that the offset is being calculated along with it. As you can see here, as I move, this moves nicely back and forth. So to do this, the first thing what we need to do here is get a border template, which you can find here on chartjustreaders.com slash getting started. Once you're on here, copy this chunk of code and you're good to go. Next. If you want to get the source code of this video and many others, check out my Patreon page. And of course, got a question, put it on Discord. All the links are in the description box. So what we're going to do here first is going to create our pie chart. We're going to scroll down here, say pie, and of course, remove the scale here. We don't need this. Let's save that, refresh, there you are. Next, what I want to do here now is to create a rectangle shape. So that would mean that here for the aspect ratio, we're going to set it on 2 instead of the default of 1. Save that refresh and now we have a rectangle shape. So we have enough space at around here to put the numbers. Next, I'm going to remove the legend. So we say comma, we say plugins here. <clears throat> and say legend. And we say here display equals false. Save. Refresh. There we are. And the final thing is I do want to have additional padding for the very top and bottom, or let's say an additional 10 uh, pixels of padding top and bottom. So I'm going to say here for the layout, specifically the top, or sorry, layout padding for the top. We'll set this on 10 pixels. That will be 10 pixels and of course for the bottom as well 10 pixels save this make sure we have this comma here save refresh there we are so we have additional space at the very top and bottom now let's start to create the labels here at the very center but of course what we want to do is make sure that we reconsider as well the hoover offset let's make this 15 save that refresh and now if I, as a hover, we'll have a 15 pixel or not even, I think it's even half of 15, maybe 7.5 pixels of movement. All right, so what we're going to do now is create our plugin. So I say comma plugins. Then I'm going to say here, our outside, let's give it our outside text labels. Copy those. Then I'm going to say a constant equals the ID of this. And of course, we say here before data sets draw, doesn't really matter because it will be outside, will not impact at all anything. So we say here, chart arcs, comma, login options. And then we're going to say a constant. What we'll need here is, well, probably the CTX and, well, definitely the CTX and maybe the data. We're going to say here equals chart. Once we did this, we're going to start calculating. What we really need to know is a few things. We want to know uh, basically the center of this position here. We need to know the angle or basically how many pixels from this point all the way here to the position where we want to do. And we want to know that the moment we hover over an item, how many pixels or how do we move that? label live it up or down so what we want to do for this is we're going to say here first of all we're going to redraw so what we're going to do here is we're going to put in a few things uh we need to calculate this center here so that will mean we're going to say i'll just show you console log and then i'm going to say chart dot get data set meta index zero and then you can say you dot data if I do this, I want access to all the data points in chart.js, or at least in the arc elements. And if I open one of them, you can see here the X and Y. The X and Y is basically the center position here, and that will give us access to a lot of more information. If I open one of them, you can see here we get here the outer radius. The outer radius is basically the point from this all the way to this point here. You have here the outer radius that is 164 pixels. Next, what I want is the starting angle and the ending angle. 
And what, the reason why I need this, this is the starting angle and the ending angle, and I need to have the center angle, or at least the one here in the very center. So what we will do with that is we just calculate these two together and divide them by two. So let's do the first step, that is the x and y. So we're going to grab this and all of them for all the data set or data points, they are same. So we're going to say here zero, and then say dot x, and what we'll call this is our constant x center equals this then I'll copy this and make it y center there we are we'll remove this and these are all consistent as you can see so that is most important one the end angle and starting angle will be not consistent because it will depend on the starting point and the ending point of the arc however what is consistent is the outer radius I'm going to grab this as well I'm going to put that in here so it's a constant outer radius equals basically everything here to the dot there we are so once we have this we can now start to work with every one of these data points but let's start to do the basic one first it's just data point index zero that's this one before we do later on a for each loop so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to grab this we're going to say here uh, let's calculate the center angle so we say here constant center angle equals well what we can do here just to make it very simple is let's cut out this constant start angle equals this dot start angle and of course the other one for the end angle so the end angle will be this and then we just say get this plus the end angle divide by two make sure that this is prioritized we first have to calculate the plus before we do anything else all right so once we did this what i want to do now is uh get the text so let's draw the text put them in there and just gradually improve this step by step so what i'm going to say here ctx.save to save all variables above then what I want to do here is a ctx.translate and translate what it does is reposition the x and y zero position by default it's here in the corner but now I want to put it here this is very important for me translate allows to do that by saying the new x or the zero position will be this specific point because you do that make sure you have saved before that and also a CTX restore afterwards. There we are. So once we have this, what I want to do here now is draw the font. So I say CTX.font equals, we can just make this bold, 12 pixels, and sans serif as the family font type. So once we did this, what I want to do here now is CTX.fill text. And the fill text will have whatever the label would be I'll just give it label for now and then we have the x and y coordinates so what we need to calculate in this case is from this point all the way here the x and y coordinate luckily this is quite easy to calculate with a specific function so what I'm going to do here I'll say a constant and we call this the x coordinate and I need to calculate here a few things. The first thing what I will be calculating is the outer radius. I'm going to get the distance from maybe from this point to here, the distance. And then what I want to do here is multiply this by math.cosinus. And then the cosinus will be based on the center angle. This will give us the exact x coordinate that we need. The same logic we're going to apply for the y coordinate, except we're going to change it to y and we don't say cosinus, we will use here just sinus. Once we did this, put it in here, put that in there, save that, refresh, there we are. As you can see here, it is working. I want to maybe reposition it a bit more better by giving it for the outer radius, let's say, plus an additional 10 pixels. There we are, that looks much better. Next, what I want to do here, because right now it's still not 
responsive, we have to fix that. But what I want to do here is at least get the text label. Right now we got this, but we're going to grab the label itself. So let's try to use the data object here. Let me say it dot data set index zero, and then here data. This would be, for example, index zero as well, but we need to soft code this. And all of this here needs to be soft coded because these are dependent on the data point. So what I'm going to do here is now make a for each loop. I'm going to grab all of this dot for each. So we're going to loop through all the data points. Here is a data point, comma index, function our expression, and then we're going to just cut out all of this, put it in here. Proper indentation for all. Then what I want to do is this here can be shortened because we have now the shorthand here. We'll reference immediately the specific data point. We will copy for every individual data point. This, so that is nice. This we will maintain. Uh, outer rate is fine. Center angle will be based on the data point. And then here, this should be then based on the index. Let's save that. Refresh. All right, that looks quite well except for these items here. So what I want to do here, I'm going to say here center position. So ctx dot text align equals center. Then I want to say ctx dot text baseline to do a vertical alignment as well. To say middle. Save this. Refresh. That looks quite nice. So what you want, what you want to do next? is making sure that this will react. And what I will do is I'll just grab the offset amount here. So let's say if this is 15, we should move this. Although in my opinion, this is not 15 pixels of movement. I think this is close to seven and a half. So what I will do is I will get this value and divide this by two. Or we don't even have to get this value. What we can do is the built-in value. So let me show you where you can find it. Let's do console log. Then say data point because we're in this shorthand now. And then if I'm on one of these data points here, there will be somewhere in the options, you will see here the offset. I'm just going to grab this and just say here now, for our outer radius, we should have an offset calculation as well. And the offset is, uh, let's see how will we do this offset. We can say a plus 10 or we can just use here the offset uh, we can do that here in the outer radius for the x and y coordinate we're going to say a plus offset and we just add this up here there we are let's save that refresh oh uh, let's see offset is of course not defined so what i can say here constant Offset will be equal to the data point dot offset of that individual uh, data point. So once we have this, we should now have this all nicely. But um, let me double check why is the font not working? Because the data point dot offset. Hold on. And of course, the reason why it's not working is it is not in data point dot offset. It was data point dot options dot offset. If I'm not mistaken, there we are. And as you can see here, we're moving. But as you can see, if I hover over this point compared to that, it goes far more away from this point. So what I would like to do here for the offset, just divide it by two to reduce the amount, and probably then it has a decent amount. I maybe even divide by three. To get the equal movement i think that is even the right amount however you can see here at the very bottom we're still clipping off an item so or number so what i'm going to do is to reduce the clip off let's say 20 and we just make this 20 as well and see that should be more than enough for all our items including the offset and yes it is beautiful and that's basically it how we can create our label with offset movement incorporated.